And he said, Certainly I will be with you, and this shall be the token unto you that I have sent you when you have brought forth the people out of bondage. You shall serve Hawa upon the mountain. And Moshe said unto Hawa, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel, and shall say unto them, The power of your fathers, of our fathers, has sent me unto you, and they shall say to me, What is his name? So this is what we're talking about. We're not saying the Creator only has you know one name, and this is the actual name of the creator we're saying you know what is the frequency being translated here because this is the only example of us being given a frequency and clearly we were asking so don't say it don't matter because it clearly matters or else moshe moses wouldn't have went back to the creator and say hey man they're gonna they're gonna need a frequency to call on because it's all it's all these hijacks to call on the people the tribes gonna need a frequency that's why we take it serious. What is his name? And shall, and shall, what shall I say unto them? And Hawa said unto Moshe, I am that I am. It is what it is, man. I exist. I am. Ain't that what we're saying today? Don't try to make us black. Don't try to make us Negro. Don't just try to call us Hebrew Israelite. Because our ancestors never called themselves Hebrew Israelites. We are. We exist. I am that I am. And he said, thus shall you say to the children of Israel, I am. I am has sent me unto you. I am. Right. I am. Some some stop right here, right? They say, hey, yeah. All right. Some go a little further. They look into the actual Strong's Concordance 1961. And whatever Hebrew root verb is being, this root verb, my naga, is being used, and it means all these things. This one verb, that's why I said you don't have to add nothing to it. It's your framer and your shaper, your ha and your wa. You don't need to add no ya. We're going to talk about the yud because it's high level trickery. Because they're adding the ya, but the ya ain't the yad or the yud. They're just telling you that the ya is the ya, yad or the yud. Their ya is something else. Your yud is something else. They're telling you, oh, we're saying ya, and you just use the yud Hebrew. Nah, man, nah, my naga. It's a duality. Their Yah is something else. And they're adding the Yah. Let's go. To be, become, come to pass, exist. This is what this Aya or Heya or Hawa means to exist. Look at all this, look at all this definition in the Hebrew root verb, I not. And this is the one being used, you know what I'm saying? That Hawa is giving the frequency. To call on the creator in this frequency. And it's coming down to H1961. Love to Lex Will, man. He been kicking that. But again, you got to keep going. So you go from the AIs. You look at it and you say, okay, well, what's this word? 1961, meaning all these things. Then you get to the hey ya, and you And you hear the natives. Hey, ya, hey, ya, hey, ya. But are the indigenous the indigenous naga saying hey or hawa 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 is it hey or hawa do you just stop at the hey or do you keep going or do you keep going cuz you're back to this reconstruction of this tetragrammaton and who's giving it to us man we're learning from them right so we got to dodge the hijacks because they say yod hey vav hey and we know the vav ain't paleo picto. We going to get it. Or Jehovah, right? We dodge those hoves, but they're trying to keep the hawa or the va. See how they put the V instead of the W? Based on the assumption of the tetra that the tetragrammaton is the imperfective of the Hebrew word hawa, which is the earlier form of heyao. 
was in a sense the one who was the one who is the existing Hawa is earlier than this Heya but this Heya right is earlier you know than this Yahweh and definitely this Aya but look at all the stuff it means right To be, become, come to pass, exist. So it's Hawa coming to pass. So it's Hawa becoming. So when they say, oh, we got to add the Yah for the future tense. What do you mean? It means to become. To come to pass. To exist. Oh, I got to change the name for a future existence. You don't change your name for a future existence. Is this the only name you're going to add a Yah to? To refer to the future, man? You don't say Yah Moshe, Yah David. If the Creator gave a name and He said I am, and it's coming out to this Aya, a Hebrew root verb, root verb meaning to be, man, to exist, to happen, to occur, to take place, to come to pass, man. I mean, to be instituted, to be established. You're talking Hawa. You're talking Hawa, earlier form of Heya. So you got to keep going to the earliest, simplest equation, my naga, to get the simplest frequency, my naga. We're talking about the earliest, right? Back to the picto. So we, you know, went over the story. Now you got your ha, you got mama, not a man. This is where they're hijacking you. This is big mama. She's giving you the breath. She's giving you the revelation, right? Daniel, everyone's getting Baruch with the breath, the revelation, and then you get your security, which makes this masculine, because it's going into the earth as a foundation. Your breath of foundation is right here, fifth and sixth letter. This is the Heya, Hewa, Hawa. Let's go. Because we're just talking about a Yud, and I got no issue with any of the Hebrew letters. I mean, you can add a Kaf in the beginning of it. You can add a Noon in the beginning. You could go Noon, hey, Wav, hey. Yeah, I mean, you can make a story out of it all. But the question is, why do you need to add to your framer and your shaper if you're just calling on your framer and your shaper? Or if you're just calling on existence itself, my knock. Because we're just talking about to exist, to be, to become, right? To exist. So when you tap into your existence, when you tap into your hawa, I mean, this is all we're getting back to. When we talk about having the root of it all, because the Hawa is the earliest, my naga. And this is, is, is that easy to express your frame and your shaper? Why add your Ya to it? Let's go. So we don't lean on one document, we put it all together so the pieces come together along the investigation, because we're seeking and we're searching, man. We keep emptying our cups so we can see clearly, because Hawa keeps filling it. A highly prominent name is that of Hawa. It is the most ancient name, earliest, right? We keep getting that form or name for the creator. I am Hawa. It is easily identified from the Hebrew verb, meaning to form, right? Or to shape, right? Or to mold. As time flowed on and the world fell apart, different people developed different names for the Father God or father and mama right for the creator king of the gods and for other superhuman personalities the myths show common patterns but the stories and relationship among the gods varies from place to place the tribes remembered the same general arrangement but estrangement led to different details or the hijack led to different details oral deterioration and later literary embellishments that's what we're talking about hijack city eroded a solid core of social memory the myth stories show these common patterns but the divergent embellishments but with divergent hijacks through this study it is now possible to isolate the old names so they forgot the name of the creator the name of the creator is now gone man let's get it from over here right here how wild the ancient name for the creator is not remembered 
The reason is simple. When the Israelites were given Yahweh, here's the hijack. They're adding the Yah, right? During the Exodus, the new name for the creator, Hijack City, they learned to forget the old Hawa. They no longer remembered Hawa. Who gave you a new name? Who gave you the Yah? Come back to Hawa, Allah Hawa.